Hello, this is Brother Kevin again, and I'm bringing to you um, a series of videos um, on submission, and I want to talk about something that I believe is very, very important. Uh, when I was a very young man, there was a particular preacher, I'll leave him nameless, because I have such great respect for him, and I appreciate his work. Uh, I would be proud to stand beside this man um, for anything. But he had some views on the Beatitudes that I thought uh, uh, I just disagreed with him on. And I would like to share about the Beatitudes because I've dealt with this area or this topic of submission for quite some time now. I just want to say to you that one of Jesus' early, maybe first recorded sermons, certainly the first recorded sermon in Matthew, is the Sermon on the Mount, which takes about three chapters to really um, get through it and it opens up with what we call the Beatitudes many of you are familiar with that and I just want to say as an introduction to this particular uh, series of messages uh, that the Beatitudes are impossible to do unless you are moving directly in the Spirit and that you're born of the Spirit trust me self-preservation concerning the old nature you're not going to love your enemies you're going to spend all your time thinking about how you can get back at them don't attempt to do the beatitudes if you have not been born again and God has not taken possession of your soul and of your heart okay I'm going to go through um, the beatitudes and I don't know how many uh, topics uh, I will take, and there again, I don't usually read scriptures, it may be necessary for me to actually uh, read the scripture to make sure that I say it right, because it's so important. Because when Jesus comes in uh, Matthew 5 and preaches the Sermon on the Mount, this is his opening um, to the kingdom of God. What's the kingdom of God going to be like in people? And what are people going to look like? And like I said, we'll go over these uh, uh, a few at a time. But what does it mean to be poor in spirit? You know, when you think about somebody that's poor, you think about somebody that doesn't maybe have much or has little. You think of somebody that uh, doesn't have all of the things that you would have. Uh, somebody that has need, maybe they have to beg for food. Or maybe they have to uh, crawl under uh, maybe a, a pile of trash for warmth. Uh, I'm not sure how you would interpret poverty, but think about poverty. And what it means, particularly in the light of America, which we have so much prosperity here. But to be poor in spirit, you would take that same application and say spiritually, I'm poor. I don't have a place to crawl in spiritually. I, uh, I have needs. I have no money spiritually. I have no clothing. I, I, I stink. I can't take a bath. How do you feel spiritually? Have you ever been at the point in your life when you were poor spirit, when you were totally depraved, there was no means for you to be able to save yourself or to help yourself? That's what it means to be poor in spirit. That's what it means. Now, I like to take the Beatitudes in order, but I may not go in order of them, but I will go through all of their points. And I want to say to be poor in spirit, to realize that you need Jesus desperately is a work of grace. As Jesus speaking in John's Gospel says, um, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He also says that nobody can come to me except the Father draw him. Now, this says that the work of salvation is still God's word. As I quoted in Ezekiel 36, 26 so much, a new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will give to you. This is the foundation for the Beatitudes. Are you poor in spirit today? Do you recognize your depravity spiritually? You can't save yourself through good works or through church attendance or through trying hard. You know, I'm going to say something about this try thing. This try thing is nothing but flesh. And you're talking to a person that did a lot of trying, so I'm not being critical. You're talking to a, looking at a person that did a lot of trying and a lot of failing because of it. Try still puts you in the command center. 
But when you're poor of spirit, there is no command center. You can't help yourself unless you get somebody put food in your hand, unless somebody gives you a place to stay, unless somebody gives you a bath, unless somebody gives you something to drink, you can't give it to yourself. Have you ever been there spiritual? But nobody could help you but God. Nobody could save you but Jesus. So you see, when we talk about submission, we're talking about laying the foundation. You're saying nobody else can help me but Jesus. I like what Jack, the Jack Chick tracks used to say on the back at the end of the book. It would say in black letters, No one can help you! I tell you what, it used to shake me up when I was a little kid. I used to read Jack Chick tracks when I was very, very young in the 70s. Um, but uh, that is a true word. Nobody can save you but Jesus Christ. He's the only one that went to the cross. He's the only one that paid the price for mankind. He's the only one that took our sin. I know there's other religions out there, but no one took our sin. No one took our penalty of death, hell, and the grave but him for us. And I want to say to you, have you ever reached that place? Have you ever reached that place where you felt poor of spirit that nobody could help you but Jesus? Nobody could save you but Jesus. Nobody could change your life. You know, just to get to that point takes humility. Because you can be at that point and be a millionaire several times over. You can be at that point and be a billionaire. You can be not at that point and be as poor as poor can be. But have you ever been poor of spirit where you realize your need for God? Because if you don't see your need for God, you can never really be born again. You have to see that you need him. And now Jesus is opening up his Sermon on the Mount and he's saying, Blessed are the poor, the spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The entryway is recognizing your depravity. It's recognizing your absolute need for God. Now, like I said, I don't have my scriptures in front of me, but and I might not say them in order, but I have to touch this one before we uh, leave the uh, before I leave the, the little ten minute video session. Is purity of heart. Jesus says, "Blessed are the pure in heart." For they shall see God. Like I said, I might not say all them in order, but this one is pressing me right now. Purity of heart, you have to have it. I believe it comes under the being poor of spirit first, because now God's going to give you the first thing you need is, is purity of heart. And like I said, Ezekiel 36, a new heart I will give you. A new spirit, a pure heart. It, interesting, it says... Blessed are the poor of spirit, for they, for they will see God. But it also says in Hebrews, Without holiness no man shall see the Lord. What an interesting contrast. If I don't want to see the Lord, go around and be unclean and be cocky and unholy and unthankful. You want to see the Lord, be humble. Be, have a pure heart. Have a pure heart. And of course God gives us that pure heart when we call upon him. You know, the scripture says in Psalms, the Lord uh, answers the man or calls upon the man who uh, calls upon him in truth. And I tell you, that is so important. Uh, the Lord is looking for true worshipers today, those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. So, are you truthful about your heart condition? Uh, do you have good church doctrine but no experience? Has Jesus purified your thoughts? Are you judgmental? Are you harmful? Are you deceitful? I know that you go to church, but have you ever received purity of heart? See, the, 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 the absolute proof that you've been born again is the changed life. Does your life center around Jesus and his kingdom and his holiness and love? Or does it still center around you and all your needs and who you think you are? Because if it does, you need to check to see whether or not you have that right relationship with Jesus. And for sure, purity is that door of us really coming into the full scope of the revelation of who Jesus is. And if you're a Christian, I know that you love Jesus. And I'm saying to you right now, if your heart is pure, you will see the Lord. That's a promise from God. He says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see the Lord. So we're going to get into the, the Beatitudes, and I'm very excited about this series. We're continuing on the theme of submission. And uh, I want you to, to be optimistic because 
I'm not saying that we can do any of these things apart from God's grace. As the scripture says, I love to quote it in Titus chapter 2, For the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that by denying ungodly and worldly desires, we should live soberly and righteously in this present age. I'm sorry, without Jesus, it just can't be done. Well, hallelujah, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see the Lord. This is Brother Kevin. And so glad to bring you these messages. Hope it'll be a blessing to you, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.